Hi, my name is Emma Reed. I'm an eighth grade math teacher. And in this video, I'm going to talk about um, the best way to talk meaningfully about place value as you're working with powers of 10 and scientific notation. So we're working with unit seven of illustrative math and we're um, on the week, week 26, if you're in the in info hub, um, where students start ordering powers of 10 and understanding how to use powers of 10 to help them estimate extremely large or extremely small numbers. And one thing that I think is very, very important when we talk about powers of 10 and scientific notation is that we reinforce and spiral in some understanding about place value. So when I speak to my students at the beginning of a scientific notation unit, I talk to them first about base 10 and why tens are so helpful and friendly in our number system. And usually we start, I'll ask students, when you first learned how to count, how did you count? And usually um, at least one student will mention counting on their fingers. And then I'll say that we developed a number system and multiple different cultures in the past developed a number system based on tens. Um, and one reason we can think that might be is because they were counting on their fingers. So with that in mind, um, the next thing that I talk to students about is the idea of a decimal place. And the fact that where we place our digits determines the value of the number that we're working with. So in order for place value to make sense, we have to start with, well, what's a digit? Because a digit is a number before it has any place value. So usually I talk to students about the idea of a phone number being digits and how when we write a phone number, we're not using that phone number as a quantity of like we're counting or measuring a certain amount of something. Those digits just mean that that's that person's phone number, right? Place value doesn't matter in a phone number. Um, we're not saying that the last four digits of someone's phone number are 4,132, right? It's just 4132. And that's the difference between a digit and a quantity or a number that's counting or measuring something. So we only have these digits and from nine on, we are reusing the same digits to show new values, new amounts. So I also mentioned to students the prefix dec, like decade, um, and in this case decimal, just to bring in again the idea of everything being based on tens, which will help students with their powers of 10 and scientific notation, etc. So a lot of times students come in with this misconception of when I multiply by 10, I add a zero. And so you want to make sure that when you talk about zeros in the place value system, you reinforce that that zero is just communicating that there is nothing in that place value. So this is no ones. And if I put a zero back here, I would be saying there are no thousandths. And the more you can talk about the zero in a number communicating something about that place value, the more helpful it will be for students to think flexibly about the fact that we can write certain numbers in different ways. So something else that comes up is when we look at a number, like let's say I have 52,000. It's really important to take just a second and say to a student, Where's the decimal in that number? And you'll be surprised how many students will mention different places that are not where the decimal actually belongs. You know, some students, the most common misconception that I've heard from students is that it goes in the middle or that it goes where the comma goes, right? So you wanna make sure that you and your students are all on the same page about the fact that the decimal, when it's not written, belongs at the end of the number. And one way to help students see that is to say, well, how would you write it if it was $52,000?
And then often students will be able to say, okay, well, I'd write it like this. Um, and that's again why it's super important to be careful with this idea of zeros and conscious of that misconception of adding zeros when you multiply by 10. Because I can keep adding as many zeros as I want now and it's not like I'm multiplying by 10. Um, and another important thing to have students realize is, okay, well, what if I take one and five tenths and I multiply that by 10? If I just add a zero, does that change the value of the number? So as much as you can help students use what they already understand about the number system to connect to these powers of 10 and to what happens when we change the place value of a number, how can it be useful to multiply by a power of 10? Students already have understandings about money. They have understandings about some friendly decimal numbers that you can use so that it can be a moment of discovery, you know? Where's the decimal place? Okay, well, what if it was money, right? Do you always add a zero when you multiply by 10? If students all say yes, give them um, that cognitive dissonance of one and a half, because that's a friendly number. If, if they have trouble looking at that number and understanding what it means, again, you can connect back to money, right? It's like $1.50. So we talked a little bit about how to introduce the idea of a base 10 number system with students. Um, and how to talk meaningfully about place value. Now I want to bring it back to day 17 from the Teach Hub, um, which is the describing large and small numbers using powers of 10 lesson, because it has a very nice visual that connects to this idea of place value. So you can see on slide five, if you're following along from the Teach Hub, um, under guidance for assessment during instruction, it says, look and listen for essential understandings to advance student thinking and to guide the summary discussion. So this is the big understanding from this lesson that's going to be a thread that you have to take with you all the way through powers of 10 and into scientific notation. So this lesson offers a great visual that you can continue to come back to to help reinforce what it says in this first bullet, which is that in base 10 numbers, each place value is 10 times larger than the one to its right. So every one unit of place value can be composed of 10 units of the next place value to its right. In other words, we move one unit over of place value, we are 10 times greater, we move one unit in the opposite direction, we take a tenth. And that language is much richer and much better to reinforce than to say we're moving the decimal place. You want to focus on the idea of, well, we're changing where the digit is, which changes the place value instead. And just final thought, this visual is very nice to help connect to the place value. Um, and the way that this lesson is designed very nicely shows that, well, we could see this one is a one, and these is tens, and these is hundreds. But I could also say, okay, well, the one unit is a tenth, so the next place value up would be ten tenths. The next place value up would be 100 tenths, right? So we can start at any point, and the relationship is still going to stay the same as we go from one place value to the next. I hope this video was helpful in thinking about how to plan for week 26 and how to spiral in some understandings of place value as you teach powers of 10 in scientific notation.